Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing three newish luxury products. So these aren't brand brand new, but they are new this season and I have yet to try them. So the first one is the Clay de Peau Radiant Fluid Foundation. That is what I'm wearing today. Really excited about that one. The next one is the NARS Extreme Effects Eyeshadow Palette. I know NARS isn't really super luxury. I would say it is more on the higher end of high end, but we're gonna count it as luxury for this video because I've been meaning to try this and then the last item I got a lot more requests for this than I thought I would so that ultimately is why this whole video is happening we have the Dior backstage glow face palette so here are my thoughts on all three of these products then just keep watching <laughs> Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. Basically, I like to share my thoughts with you on the makeup that is new on the makeup market. I've collected a few luxury items that I've been wanting to review, but since they're not brand new, I was like, let me just squish them all into one video because you guys have been very curious about my thoughts on these. And nobody asked me about the Clay de Peau Radiant Fluid Foundation because I don't review Clay de Peau on my channel. It's, uh, it's, a, bit, it's a bit too pricey, a bit out of my range but I was in Nordstrom yesterday so I picked up a sample so I did not pick up the bottle got a free sample because this foundation costs $130 but the curiosity killed me my friend Tara Tara Lynn here on YouTube she loves this foundation and I was like Tara you are not about to make me spend $135 so I'm really hoping this foundation doesn't work out for me because free is a lot better than $130 but let's find out very quickly I'm gonna prime my face with a tried and true Too Faced Hangover Primer. Very important to use a primer you're familiar with with a foundation review so I can really see how the makeup sets and wears. So some facts about this foundation. It comes in a very nice glass heavy bottle. A little bit nicer than this. There are 24 shades and I got mine in the shade B20 light medium beige. Hopefully this is actually the correct shade. This does have SPF 20 and this is a soft matte liquid foundation that combines a radiant finish with long-term skincare benefits to smooth and refine skin while minimizing the appearance of visible pores. Right, I didn't do too much research into this foundation. I just know Tara liked it, so I really wanted to try it. So B20 looks like a very nice shade on me. We will see about that. So I'm just going to paint it on my face as I normally would. This might be like a touch peachy on me, but nothing bad. Now I'm gonna take my sponge and just push it into the skin. Okay, that looks very nice. Let me blend it onto the forehead now. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. You guys can really see my skin. So I would say a lighter to medium coverage based on this one quick layer and you can see the difference between my natural skin <laughs> and my not natural skin. Um, it is blending out very nice and easily. Sometimes you'll find some foundations can be a little bit more tricky to move around your skin. I'm not having problems with this one. Okay, so here is how one quick layer is looking. And that's a very beautiful coverage. And it's weird because it is a matte finish, but you can see a little bit of that radiance as well. That's very, very cool. So we're gonna put a little bit extra product on my areas that need a little bit of extra coverage, which is the center of my face where I get redness. And it will provide you a little bit of extra coverage if you continue to layer. But of course, with foundation, you shouldn't layer too much on because that is how it sinks into your lines and just looks a little bit heavy. So if you can limit your foundation to one layer and then a second layer on some areas that need more coverage, you should stop there. I'm not even gonna lie, you guys. This foundation looks really smoothing over the skin. It is more of a medium coverage so you can still see some skin through but it has a nice soft matte finish to it it brushes over pores beautifully it hasn't sunk in yet so while that sets i'm gonna do my eyebrows concealer powder all of that stuff if you're curious about anything else that i'm wearing it will be down in the description box and then we will move on to the eyeshadow palette but based on first application the foundation looks really good okay so with complexion basically done i just did a bit of concealer and a touch of the charlotte 
Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless in the center of my face. And then I did use a powder blush and bronzer to kind of set the outside of the face. And here's how we're looking. It might look the tattest, 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 tattest bit dry because this is more of a matte finish foundation. But I'm not bothered by that because as the day goes on and my natural oils come through, I feel like starting off with a base like this is actually better. So then it will become more natural and not too oily too quickly. And it's not a dryness where it's like showing off dry patches by any means. You can just tell it's matte and I have dry skin. But it still looks really great, very flawless. But let's hop into the eyeshadow palette. Like I said, this came out in the beginning of the season and I bought it at Ulta a few weeks ago and I'm finally excited to give it a go. So this is the Extreme Effects eyeshadow palette. This is $60. It says this has 12 sultry shades in super matte shimmer and latex like finishes and this is limited edition. I've gotten as far as swatching this palette and it feels amazing. The color story in here, great color story for fall. It's not too bold at all. It's very wearable, a little bit more on the deep side. Kind of boring, like nothing we haven't seen before, but they felt amazing. So I think this guy is going to stand out more so in the quality as opposed to the actual color story. There's three purples to create a bomb purple look right now. Y'all know I'm thinking about it. We might just have to do that. Anyways, we're going to start off with this cream shade right here. I'm just using a blender brush. Oh, that's way too deep. Never mind. Ooh, that does not look good. <laughs> That definitely pulled deeper than I was anticipating, but that is a great brow cream color for deeper complexions though, not for light complexions. We're actually gonna use that shade, I stand corrected, as a crease transition shade, not necessarily crease, because this is like a half shade deeper than my actual skin tone, but this is going to be the base for all of the shadows to blend into and just to create a very smooth, canvas so there we go that's what that shade is for all right so now we're gonna use the mauve shade right here I know I'm doing a purple look I'm so predictable but you guys I can tell you if this palette is gonna be good or not based on these shades so this color very very pigmented you did get some fallout it is a little bit more loosely packed so make sure you tap off your brush but as you can see that blended quite seamlessly and it is packing on some color it's blending out Ooh, see these are colors that i know i'm gonna use a lot even though it doesn't excite me when i first look at it they're just colors that i feel so comfortable with for this time of year so you can get a great fall look with this palette but like a basic fall look you know nothing special and now we're gonna go into this shade right here the deeper plum shade this is a shimmer finish but don't be intimidated you can use it like a matte finish so whatever it's kind of too much on my brush i'm gonna bring it to the other eye and then we'll come back we're gonna blend this for some depth Now we're gonna go into this shade right here. Oof, it feels so creamy. Okay, and I'm gonna apply this to the outer half of the eyelid. And this is just gonna provide a fun little purple sparkle. It actually is, does not have as pigmented of a base as I thought it was gonna be. It more so has a lid topper kind of feel to it. So I'm not the biggest fan of that. I thought I was getting something else. Okay, scratch that. No, we'll do a fall look. Let's go for this color right here. I'm using a Wayne Goss number seven. And I'm gonna put this all over the lid. And this is a gorgeous warm bronze shade. It actually has almost some pink sparkles to it pink and gold. Ooh, this is really pretty. Yeah, I did not like that purple shade that I just used too much. I think it would be pretty for a purple topper on the lid, but it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be because I wanted that one to give me some color. Now this color is giving me what I want. It is really gorgeous. I'm going to go back into that plum shade that we used in the outer corner. We're going to blend this out. Get that blown out look that I like. To give the lower lash line some love, I'm going back in with that original mauve shade. I'm just quickly gonna run this along my lash line. I'm using a BK Beauty 207, gorgeous. And then I'm gonna take some of the metallic plum shade, apply that right on top. To finish her off, we're using this as our highlight shade. And I'm gonna pat this, ooh, very pretty. I like this shade. So, all right, so this is the look, just a simple fall 
I was using the Extreme Effects palette, and I do like this palette. I think the mattes are super creamy, very blendable. The shimmers are really pretty. I'm gonna have to test out the rest of the shades because I wasn't a big fan of this shade. It's more of like a sheer sparkly shade, which yeah, I wanted it to have more color to it. So I definitely wanna play with this some more. So far it seems really good, but I don't think it is a necessity because you have these colors, but if you really like the NARS formula, it is on par with their stuff. It's pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna finish liner lashes and all of that, and then we will get to, I think what most of you are excited for, the Dior Backstage palettes. Guys, with liner and lashes, I'm really digging this smoky fall look. This palette for these smoky fall eyes. Yes, and on my lips, I'm wearing Chantecaille Tamarind from their new collection. Again, perfect for fall. Fall vibes today. Uh, highlighter is gonna kind of make my face a little bit mishmash, but let's get into the Glow Face Highlighter Palettes. Now, I have had a heck of a time with these. I feel like I originally ordered these straight from the Dior web website and they came not shattered that's a strong word but they definitely came broken to the point where I emailed them to try and get my money back and get them to send a new one I love ordering from the Dior website because their stuff comes so nicely packaged it's a very luxurious experience but when it comes to having to return items it's a little bit more work the policy with Sephora is really just very easy so we're spoiled with that so it makes anything else seem harder but anyways I'm still waiting for them to send me the return label for that and while I was waiting I just decided to order these from from Sephora and everybody seems to have had some type of issues with shipping based on what you guys have told me they've either come broken or when this came even from Sephora they were like out of the pan I had to kind of squish them back in in both palettes so something about the formula in here Dior has to work on they seem pretty in now but I do I can still press them down they released three palettes and it says online these are limited edition but it also says the original ones are limited edition as well so I don't know I haven't even touched these as far as swatching but I got the two that I thought would go good on my skin tone so I have pure gold and then this one I'm super excited for this is rose gold uh, this is really truly the one that I wanted. I have not swatched these. I'm so excited. If you're new to my channel, a little biased. The other two shades that Dior has released of these quads previously are my favorite highlights. And we'll start off with the rose gold. So I'm gonna go one, two. Here is that light shade. The second, ooh, okay. Now we'll do three and four. Three and four. Ooh. Just turned my brightness down a little bit, so hopefully you can see the colors a little bit better. And let's swatch the pure gold while we're at it. So I'm gonna do the same order. One, two, three, four. One, two, oops, three. Okay, so here the top four is rose gold. Then we have the regular pure gold. And for the pure gold, definitely this one is not gonna work as an actual highlighter for me. So medium skin tones can make this one work, but not on my skin tone. So these look gorgeous. I have gotten a lot of questions about the Charlotte Tilbury, how it compares. There's been a lot of luxury highlighters to come out. So I might do a video on this one, the Dior, the Pat McGrath, and the Natasha Denona once I get them all in. But this is the only one that I currently have. I would say the closest match to this one has to be the fourth shade in the rose gold palette. They're similar, but this one is more like glittery reflective. So they aren't even that close. So there are eight shades all together. I only have two cheeks, so I might not get to try all of the shades that I want to try today. But we're gonna start off in the rose gold. I want to see if I can use this baby as a blush topper. So, ooh, yes, it's so pretty as a blush topper. It's not too shiny. I'm using a refer number four brush, by the way. That makes a gorgeous blush topper. So far, so good. All right, so now let's try the peachy highlighter. I'm using a Kaleidos H1 brush. And this is very, very metallic. It's gorgeous. It's not glittery. There are some sparkles in there, but they are just so fine that it's not bothering me at all. Let me tip off my cheek this one. Like right. Oh, yeah. And these are layering so beautifully. So we'll take some of this as the inner corner highlight too. So just for 
experimental purposes. Ooh, okay, obviously this is only a first impressions, but I love this one. This is a winner. And I like pink highlights typically, so no surprise there. So this guy I know is not gonna work for me. So that's just that. That has to be a lid color. But let's play around with this pure gold color. Ooh, that's actually still very pretty. That works on my skin tone. Sometimes these can run a bit too yellow. That looks really good. Okay, cool. And now we'll try this one right here on the center of my cheek. Ooh, okay, that one is a very blinding color. Not emphasizing texture. It's still that great formula that is in the other palettes, by the way, which are amazing. Now we'll take the lightest one. Okay, I am flat out impressed with these. Really excited I picked these up. They seem to be the same formula as the old ones. My favorite one is the rose gold because these are the colors that I wear more, but if you like gold, I still recommend the pure gold. Okay, so before I send you off, let me give you my final thoughts as of now. The Chantecai looks really good. I'm excited to see how this wears, so. I will add a little clip at the end of this video so you can see the eyeshadow palette. I think it's nice. I don't think it's knocked my socks off. I was really hoping that it would because the quality seems so great when I swatched it and the quality does seem really beautiful on the eyes, but it's true. It's not a palette that you need. It's not unique colors, but if you're looking for like a great everyday fall palette, this is very, very nice quality. It's not gonna steer you wrong. Nothing special out on the market right now, but still very pretty. And then the Dior highlighters. My expectations were very high for these because I loved my other ones so much and they did not disappoint. My cheeks look gorgeous and glowy. The only thing is if you have the opportunity to buy these in person as opposed to online, I would recommend that just because these don't seem to be coming in one piece. So that's all I have for now. I'm going to check in at the end of the day and we'll take a look at the foundation. So it is about nine o'clock. So I've worn the foundation for about six hours now. I wish I could have done it for a little bit longer, but I'm not trying to stay up till midnight and editing this video because I have to work in the morning. So we're gonna just stop it here, but I do think this is a beautiful foundation. Let's come on in. So I ate hot soup for dinner. So you'll see where my nose is kind of running. It did fade a little bit, but it really didn't go into my smile lines very much. Now mine aren't very deep, but it's always impressive when a foundation doesn't go in my smile lines. And overall, this foundation wore beautifully and even where it start to wore down, it still looks very beautiful. The highlight is still sitting nice and vibrant on my cheek. The eyeshadow as well is not creasing. It looks just as great as it did hours ago. So overall, everything in here I think was a success. The thing that I like the most about the foundation is the finish that it gives the skin. Now, I didn't give it a full wear test, not enough time, and also literally I did nothing today. So it didn't get an actual nice hard wear out, so I do need to continue playing with this foundation. But it has that overall airbrush finish that I find that my favorite luxury foundations give. If you have the Dior Air Flash, the La Mer Foundation, Tom Ford, all of them I feel like just have this finish to them that only luxury foundations foundations have. This one is in that category for sure. It is a good one. It gets my stamp of approval for my first impressions and you guys know I need to continue playing with it. From what I can tell I really like the way it wore down and I really love the finish that it gives my skin and it definitely looks more skin like now that my oils have started to kind of come through. So that is all I have for today's video. I'm gonna end it there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts about these products down below. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already please make sure you take the time to do so i would really appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one